Okay, now we're recording a video that uh, instructs you on how to get some things done using Altera Quartus. Cool, let's go. What's best anyway? This is uh, the program Altera Quartus. We're trying to use uh, a cyclone uh, FPGA circuit to create some uh, sounds interactively with its environment. This is the whole design. It looks uh, pretty simple, yeah but uh, for some reason it just took too much time to to get there okay and I'll uh, go through it and you might uh, tell me in the end of the video how come it took so long to come out yeah okay so this is the design uh, magnified I'll try to get it as magnified as I should uh, for the video to be pretty visible and neat. I'm not really experienced in that. That's uh, my clock. It's a 50 megahertz uh, clock. It oscillates at 50 fr uh, megahertz. Oh dear, this is um, a counter that has uh, nine. Uh, pins in the output and we're getting only when the top of the count has been reached that means that uh, you get 100 kilohertz repetition frequency if, you, if the clock is uh, approximately 50 megahertz okay now these are our musical frequencies because 100 hertz 100 kilohertz is not audible by humans and I believe by most of the animals on the planet okay so we have uh, four frequencies this is our 50 megahertz clock this is the 100 kilohertz clock I'll explain you in a bit uh, why these two clocks are here okay this is our uh, multiplexer it gets the four frequencies generated and it selects uh, one in the output according to what the result is uh, these blocks uh, this is like uh, a primary block that Altira gives you as a mega function this is one built by sub function uh, blocks set together we'll see now why and how okay I'll just magnify that enough we got our um, clock that makes the counters work our count enable which is a hundred kilohertz clock there you go uh, and we have timers as you can see one counter gives two frequencies because it's capped I mean we get the output on different occasions when uh, uh, this one is one or this one is one it gives us an output um, we get uh, the LPM counter 2 who has 9 uh, actually 10 bits on the output because 9 plus is 0 1 and gives us another frequency and we have uh, an 11 bit counter that gives us the third frequency the fourth frequency yeah okay so I'm going back to our design this is the multiplexer and these are the selection lines we'll explain that later and that goes uh, that's just to enable stuff yeah uh, to have to give us an output only when there is an output here that's an AND gate and this is a constantly on thing so it will give us something when we get something and these are um, the outputs to the speaker yeah the out buffer and um, the output to the piezoelectric speaker. 
okay let's move on we have another clock set here that gives us one hertz uh, one hertz is uh, for uh, the use of other stuff like uh, the inputs of uh, this uh, robot we're trying to build here okay uh, these are our inputs and we connect on channel 1 we, sh we call it channel 1 and we call it channel 2 uh, it, we can call it whatever we want to uh, they are set on pin uh, 87 and 86 respectively on the circuit yeah And the reason for that is uh, that this is just how the designers build the rest of the board that hosts the FPGA circuit. So, one is uh, for the left, say, sensor that detects black and white, and the other is for the other sensor. Imagine like uh, two sensors in front of a robot, like human eyes. Yeah. Okay, and uh, the objective of this um, task is to have something in our minds uh, with regards to a toy. So, these are our sensors to LED and uh, the whole thing about this is uh, that we're saying, okay, this is a bunny, this robot is a bunny and it finds using its sensors a carrot or a fox on its way. The carrot is... Um, when both sensors are occupied that means it found a big thing you know they both give one and the other is um, when only one is found so that things is a carrot uh, the response will be either a smile or a frown according to the LED settings on the board and this is how it gets the LED settings done yeah okay we have uh, the fox carrot interface this is the inputs from the sensors uh, this is the fox output yeah and the carrot output Th that is uh, an AND gate and that's an exclusive OR gate that means that both sensors are busy finding something this is just one sensor and now this is how the LEDs are lit the LEDs are set to like have four basic LEDs and some others up or down so it can form a smile or a frown which is exactly the same depends on how you see it right and these are the LEDs that this is the output to the LEDs you know etc I close this on that that's just this little box yeah <laughs> so now you're getting a clue these are uh, some gates uh, that actually do quite the same thing as we uh, programmed inside the circuit. These were given courtesy of our professor to start something with, yeah. And uh, we have some memory with 256 sec seconds persistence because we get one hertz inside and it has 256 um data things in after the counter so it's just a memory with 256 seconds persistence that is um okay that, that is some minutes yeah okay and um that's just an accumulator that uh, will give us some results on the outside um and then it overflows and we clear it so it runs continuously uh, that's you know to get us some frequencies running you know from the low frequency to the higher frequency and these are the selection li lines we get um, two lines here yeah three actually and the thing is that our selection lines as you might notice on the decoder board are just two so this is a piece of code that gets a bus with like three lines two plus zero and gives us two lines and gets the most significant lines to, uh, to be matched from one side bus to, of the bus to the other let's see how this is we've used some libraries standard uh, logic libraries according